Hey guys, Ray here. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. Today I'm going to be testing how long a typical server rack battery like this one will run a house refrigerator. If you want to have some fun, come along. Let's get started. So this is the setup I'm using. I'll be using one of these server rack batteries. This battery is designed to go in a server rack so you can wheel it around your garage but it's mainly designed to power your house. So this is a 48 volt battery, but it also comes in a 12 volt battery or 24 volt battery. At this standard size, they all contain pretty much around five kilowatt hours of energy. Now these batteries are really nice if you don't want to hook a whole bunch of those little 12 volt batteries to get a large battery bank. These are cost friendly to you and they are designed to last a really long time. This one has a 10 year warranty. So here's the inverter I'm using. This is a GrowWatt all-in-one power system, meaning it's an inverter that connects to a server rack battery here. But it's also a solar charge controller. But I'm gonna, in this breaker box, I'm gonna turn off the solar power so it's just running on the battery. So the, the battery cables come down here, just connect right underneath there to two bolts. And then on the AC output side, I have a box here that provides power and then that also comes over here provides power to this box and this is where I'm going to be uh, plugging my extension cords into to run my fridge so when the inverter is idling it's using 50 watts of power so if that runs for an hour it's 50 watt hours of battery power consumed so my battery is 5120 watt hours divided by 50 I get 102, so I should be able to idle the inverter without the fridge on there for 102 hours. So just over four days. So let's use that calculation and go calculate how much power the fridge is going to use in theory. Okay, this is our house fridge we're going to be powering. We have five kids, so this thing gets used a lot. If you wanna see how much power you're gonna use on your fridge, you could use this kilowatt. Basically, you just plug it into your outlet and then you plug your fridge into that and you run it all day long and then you can see how much watt hours or how many watts you're using for, throughout all the day. But I haven't used this so I don't know how much uh, energy my fridge is using. So doing a quick Google search, I think my fridge uses about 300 watts when the condenser is running, but it's not running all the time. I think it's using 150 watts on average. So with the 150 watts of the fridge and the 50 watts idle time of the inverter, that's 200 watts. So if I divide 5,120 divided by 200 watts, I should get 25 hours of runtime in theory. But let's make it a little more interesting. When the power goes out, I think most people will end up using extension cords to power their critical appliances. Like me, my house isn't set up perfectly. I'm still working on it but I'm using extension cords right now. Now I'll show you my extension cord setup that I have. Now I don't think I, I wouldn't recommend just running long lines of extension cords to power things. Again, this is not ideal, but this is a really long run. So this is a 25 foot, 14 gauge extension cord. This is a 50 foot, 10 gauge extension cord. This is a 25 foot, 12 gauge extension cord. And this is a 25 foot, 12 gauge extension cord. It goes through my wall behind and is powering my fridge right here. When my condenser is running on my fridge, it's using 300 watts of power, which is like 2.5 amps. Now here's a little image I found when shopping for extension cords that will help you decide how many, what size extension cord you need if you're gonna power your appliances. I've got 125 feet of extension cords and I'm only using 2.5 amps, so it should be well within the limits. I'm not using any 16 gauge extension cords uh, for this setup, so it should be good. But of course, if you have like a loose connection on some of your extension cords, you might get some heat or some melting where they connect. So it's better just to have one big extension cord if you have to, if you need to. So let's use Ohm's law to calculate how much power we're going to lose with this long extension cord. Now Ohm's law states V is equal to I times R, or voltage, the voltage drop in the long extension cord will equal current times resistance. 
So I believe the current on my fridge is going to be 2.5 amps when the condenser is running. Now I just need to measure the resistance in that long extension cord. Let's go measure the resistance and plug it into the formula. It's 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Try the other side. It's 0 0.3, 0 0.4. I'm just going to say for this test, 0.4 ohms. Using our formula, 2.5 amps times 0.4 ohms, that equals only one volt of power loss. Now when I have one volt of power loss and my current is 2.5 amps, one volt times 2.5 amps is 2.5 watts. So I'll have 2.5 watts of power loss using my long extension cord. Uh, not too bad actually. You know, I thought it'd be a lot more. Let's run this test and see if we can run it for 25 hours. Okay, here I am behind the fridge. I'm going to use this to measure all the power going into the fridge. How much power the fridge is going to be consuming during this test. Okay, and at the other end of my long extension cord, I'm going to plug this meter in. So at the end of the test, I can compare the watt hour readings from these two meters and see how much power loss is coming from this really long extension cord. Plug that in. Plug this into the inverter. And then for my battery, I've got the smart shunt. It'll measure all the power coming out of the battery to power uh, this inverter and the power loss in the extension cords. So, so we'll see how efficient this setup is that I have. I'll turn the solar off so it's just running off the battery. Looks like our battery is at 100% right now. So let's flip it on. Right now it is five o'clock in the afternoon on a Monday. There it goes. Okay, we should be powering my fridge now. All right, the fridge is on, that's good. So someone unplugged my extension cord. So I restarted the test on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. So now it's Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. It's been a full 24 hours. Let's go see how much power I have. So my fridge, it's using a lot less power than I originally estimated. And it looks like I have 45% battery charge. So that's awesome. So let me check this tomorrow morning. It's been 45, just over 45 hours. Let's look at the battery. I think it's just about done for. This on. Battery's at 1%. Cool. Consumed a total of 99 amp hours. The most power draw I've seen from this has been 142, 150 watts. So the fridge isn't using that much power when the condenser's on. Um, according to what I'm seeing here, discharged 5.2 kilowatt hours. Let's go check our meters at the fridge and at the power cord. Okay, let's see how much power the fridge has used during this whole time. 2.97 kilowatt hours. 2.97 kilowatt hours divided by 5.2 kilowatt hours. So that's 0.55. So the fridge is responsible for 55% for of that power consumption. Let's see where the other power loss is occurring. Let's follow this extension cord. Look at the power meter on the other side of the extension cord. See how much power loss we're getting in that extension cord. Okay, that meter shows the fridge consumed 2.97 kilowatt hours. Follow the extension cord out to the RV. Make use solar panels here. Okay, it looks like this one is consumed 3.02 kilowatt hours. So pretty much five watt hours the entire time. That's nothing. Having the extension cord on there, that's only, it's only on average, it's only using 0.1 amp watts, 0.1 watts to have that extension cord on there. Granted, the fridge isn't using very much power at all. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my solar panels. Now I've got about this many solar panels hooked up to that battery. So it's 8 o'clock in the morning. The sun's not up very high, but I should have the battery fully charged at about 2 in the afternoon. These are actually $50 used solar panels that I got at Santan Solar. So this entire array, 300 bucks.
I've got a link to these panels and a discount code in the description. But two of these panels should be able to keep your battery charged all day. If you have clouds, you just have to order a few more solar panels. You can really have indefinite cold food in your fridge. Just get a bunch of used solar panels. Shipping is kind of expensive, so you probably want to get a whole pallet or you can drive to one, the location in Georgia or Arizona and pick them up in person. That's probably the cheapest way to do it. So yeah guys, we've got about 46 hours of run time. If you want to see another test that I did where I ran three fridges and my furnace in my house, and I also showed how to set up the battery system a little bit, uh, I'll put a link at the end of the video, um, including a link to that. I'm going to do another test where I use this really expensive Victron inverter. We'll do the same test with the fridge. We'll see how much more efficient that is. But thanks for watching. Let me know if you want me to test anything else. See ya.